Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today it's uh, Thursday the 23rd of March. I've taken the seed to the farmer, which I loaded up yesterday, the spring barley. Dropped that down there and we've been keeping an eye on these cows here, which are the last ones to carve. Um, I haven't had anything where I've had to use the jack yet. I've got a carving jack. I've been waiting for the last 14 cows to get in with a carving jack and show you guys pulling a calf, but they just haven't needed the jack, um, which is really unusual. I was hoping to show you some carving action and um, we had one last night we've had another one this morning which is both carved they both carved themselves we can't believe it because last year we carved to the blonde aquitaine bull which is this continental great big calves um, french european breed and like i say this year hardly used the carving jack um, which is just unbelievable with the aberdeen angus so we've got one aberdeen angus bull and we've got one blonde aquitaine bull and the way it's going we're going to be ending up with two aberdeen angus bulls because of the easy carving with the Aberdeen Angus, which has um, just been amazing, absolutely amazing. And I think it's time as well for another bedding session in here before long with the spreader bale or the telehawk. We put these on the other day because we were gonna go out and do the silage fields, but it's just been so wet, we can't even get on the land. Your progeny's been very good, boy. Very good. The lovely sight this time of the year, daffodils and little lambs playing in the daffodils. So some of our last ones, which we've got to go down to the marshes. And who needs the gym or a gym membership when you've got one of these? An old feed trolley, it's been brilliant. So I'll fill this up every day at the moment. Expensive, but they need it, so can't get away from it. Take some pulling on the way back. That's full. This is a tire off my old 6300. We kept it. All the net wrap and all the wrap in there. Let's try and keep the place tidy. This is a new Belgian blue calf we had last night. Hello. All right, so it's just started raining again now. And uh, I think another reason why the carving's going touch wood pretty well is because over the last year we've got into pelvic scoring which has helped no end with the genetics of the Tuckman cows with culling out sort of the worst cows for carving some of the difficult carvers um, and just really trying to breed from the best and, and keep some of the best carvers um, so yeah that, that's um, working really well. This has been one of the wettest marches on uh, on record like I say you can't get onto the land much at the moment if you have a look this field previously had sheep on it we've taken them down now with the tractor and they're off here so they've tightened the grass up really well hence why we were going to come along with the chain arrows was yeah. you have a look if you have a look all of the sheep muck which is still left on here this is what i was hoping to sort of pull around with the, with the chain arrows try and get it all leveled out and ready for silage it is coming towards as well it's in its last last year of its lay so after this we'll be getting the plow out and either growing another crop in here or putting another grass lay in but it was a, a long-term lay it was a five-year lay and you can see it's starting to go now starting to wear thin we've just paid about four thousand pounds if you look over there at the barley that's the spring barley we paid four thousand for some liquid fertilizer from omex and that was yeah, quite a difficult pill to swallow because um we weren't expecting the bill to be so high but then fertilizer has gone up so you don't mind the fertilizer price going up as long as um, you get the price for, for the barley on the other end. And the same with the grass, you know, we've got the grass into the cattle, it's got to give us a return in order to pay for the increasing costs of fertilizer, fuel and feed. So it's gonna be a little while until we can come out on this field um, and then put the chain harris to work. But look here, we've got the flashing light of the gate. That is really, really good now. That's my ro road mode for the buggy when we're going and checking all the cattle down at the broads, which we do every day. Um, if you have a look at this hedge row here, this hedge has not been cut yet this year. And that's because um, we've changed contractor now. So our hedging contractor has been super busy. They haven't been able to get around and do all these hedges. So sort of later on in the year, um, I was hoping maybe to go and look at a secondhand hedge cutter. But at the moment, we're really busy with the straw blower. That was one thing which I wanted to buy and be able to bed all the cattle down with the machine. It's a long-term investment, so we'd keep it for long, long time, 10, 15 years. It's, it's gonna be on dry straw. It's gonna be looked after. Um, I'm really struggling to choose between the spreader bale and the telehawk. They're both really, really good bedders. So yeah, I, I can't say at the moment which one we're gonna go for because it's so difficult. Um, but yeah, leave a comment in the comment section. I don't know if you remember last year, but we pulled all this fencing out and we've just put, just finished putting in some new fencing. So it's uh, 
good stock fencing which we've just installed for grazing cattle and sheep on here. Hopefully it will last 10 or 20 years. Right, and I hope you can see over the last, literally over the last couple of days, this barley has come up really, really well. Um, unfortunately with the price, you know, price of barley has gone down recently, just as it has with feed wheat. Feed wheat, I think has gone down to about 180 pounds. You can see that deer walking off there, which is eating all of our crop. Um, they're really good coverage. I mean, the drilling this year has been absolutely fantastic with the John Deere 8 RX from Middle Ditch. And we were maybe thinking this year, with the cattle, we're keeping more cattle this, this year, and we were hoping to fatten some of our Aberdeen Angus calves. Um, maybe it's worth fattening the cattle on some of our own barley. If anyone's done that, drop it in the comment section. Is it justifiable or, or is it better to sell the barley and make some money from the barley um, at the moment? not making that much money on the barley, so it's quite difficult to say. I've got to say, it's really good drilling, that. Really, really good. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And a big job for this year is, if you have a look at these branches, they're starting to overhang. They're really nice to look at, lovely trees, but they are overhanging, so we might just have to start cutting them off either with a chainsaw or one of those pincers on an excavator. Uh, because you, when I flail mow all this in the summer, I won't be able to get the cab underneath the tree branches. This here is where we're supposed to be planting the fodder bee. This is where we're gonna get some more cattle food. And we'd usually be getting on planting it by now. It's still too wet, can't get on the ground. Nightmare. I was just wondering whether I could run the flat lift through some of these wet holes once it dries out, stop them from uh, Most of the time we've got one of the driest farms in the country, but it takes a lot for our farm to get bogged down. Go on, girl. Go on. Oh. And here she is, sports fans, the Tallahawk. So um, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Tallahawk or would you like to see the spreader bale? Um, to be fair, we're gonna give them a really good session tomorrow. Uh, Tallahawk visa spreader bale on Friday's bedding day. Um, yeah, really, really uh, re impressed with both machines and it's really, really difficult to choose between them. But let me know in the comments. This reminds me more of what we used to have back in the day, the straw blower, so it's more familiar to me. I understand how the spout works. The bed on the floor, that's how the bale obviously goes in and out. Then we've got the door on the back, which I have learned you can self-load with. So a huge thanks to Teagle for bringing it out and for Pex Agri. If you go and check out Pex, you've got JCB, Teagle and all of that good stuff. Um, yeah, but... I just, I want it to stay. I want the, t the Telehawk to stay and it's never leave. So we'll see. We'll, so we'll see what we can do, guys. I'm not promising anything, but I'm just going to say that we'll, we'll see what we can do. And um, yeah, might see a Telehawk here in the future. So um, yeah, it'd be awesome. We could feed the beet out with our fodder beet bucket, bed down with the Teagle Telehawk. And then some people, someone said you can get a, an old silage unroller which would be pretty cool because then we could feed all of our cattle from the telehander which would be quite a good idea actually because we didn't want to invest in, in a diet feeder we just didn't want to pay for one and we don't do clamp silage we don't do maize nothing like that just literally fodder beet silage straw and some concentrates from adlib feeders so that would work really really well for us um so yeah leave a comment in the comment section unfortunately the weather is terrible today and we'll be out bedding up tomorrow so thanks for watching and leave a comment about these which one do you want to see the, the teagle telehawk or do you want to see the spread of ale comment leave it in the comment section and i'll catch you on the next one click here to subscribe to the channel and click here to watch another ollie's farm video mm.